I am part of a community where I need not ask for permission to just be me. Accepted into a family where there is no link in our DNA or perhaps in our surnames, yet our love simply resonates. We remain connected by an undeniable bond which carries us through the toughest tribulations, whether it is just one of us or all of us. We go through it as one because our love unites. Recognising as a team, we can and will get through anything. Each of us has our own journeys, our own trials, as we have embarked on different walks of life. Yet our paths have not only crossed over, they have also intertwined. What we have reminds me of the movie Waiting to Exhale, where Savannah, Gloria, Bernadine and Robin are exuberant women of power, recognising what they have, knowing what they deserve, striving for what they desire. We won't always keep the peace. We will get under each other's skin, though unintentionally. We may push one another's buttons, which will disrupt the family. But that's okay. No true relationship is without fault. A lesson learnt creates an opportunity for growth. We mustn't forget the battle is not against each other, but designed to bring us closer so we can unite and overcome together. Those words come from a poem called Interconnection, written by Sandra Burko in her book Sankofa, Heal, Evolve and Unite. I'm very grateful indeed to Canon Neil and Dean Sue and all of the Cathedral Chapter for the invitation to come and introduce this first Lent lecture this year, uh, which is entitled Sankofa for such a time as this. And you may be wondering what Sankofa is, intrigued perhaps by the proposition that it is relevant to our times, offering hope to our world, a world in which we so frequently uh, divide and destroy ourselves. Well, all the people you're about to hear from are members of the Triangle of Hope Steering Group. Each will speak to the title of tonight's lecture through their own distinct responsibilities within the structures of the Triangle of Hope. And just so that we're all clear, the Triangle of Hope is a family. It's an intentional interconnection between the dioceses of Kumasi in Ghana, Virginia in the United States and ourselves here in the Diocese of Liverpool. The Triangle isn't a standalone project as such. It's a whole range of projects and work streams and, and connections uh, ranging from how we make decisions in our own diocesan synods and structures, how we can learn from each other through deep listening, how we can equip young people to be clearer in their vocation to stand against all that is not of God and particularly racism and discrimination uh, and so much more. Each of the three dioceses brings its own context to the table and underpinning all that we do is a prayerful commitment to the other. Together, we are dedicated to transforming the long history, the ongoing effects and continuing presence of slavery in our world through repentance, reconciliation and mission. Here in the Diocese of Liverpool, one of the Triangle of Hope projects is Sadaka House, based here in the campus of Liverpool Cathedral. I think it's nine young people now from around the world that we have welcomed to Sadaka House to be part of the Sadaka community from Liverpool and from Africa and the US. And we're so thankful for each one of them for their response to the call of God to teach us what reconciliation looks and feels and sounds like. I know their various ministries have been really welcomed and supported by the cathedral and its ministries. They have been and continue to be a real blessing to us and I would encourage you to keep on praying for them. Those in the house today, we have Nelson and we have Ian, we have Tom and we have Rosa based in a, a, a community house out in the diocese. Uh, and those preparing to join the community, please pray for them as well in sept September as they arrive. Also pray for those who are dispersed and carrying the torch of hope and reconciliation back home, wherever that may be. 
For those who don't know me, my name is Malcolm Rogers and I have the honour of being the Bishop of Liverpool's Canon for Reconciliation. I'm the only person now in the Church of England, as far as I understand, to have this title, which is indicative of our own Bishop's absolute determination to support this core gospel work of repentance, reconciliation and mission. Across three continents, you might say, we're building an even bigger church that it might make an even bigger difference. In a few moments, you will hear from my colleague and friend in Kumasi, Reverend Father Nana Kesi, a fellow of Liverpool Cathedral, and he will introduce us to what Sankofa is. Then we shall have three very different components, first from Archdeacon Jennifer McKenzie on her work leading the work of the Triangle of Hope, connecting the theological colleges and seminaries of the three dioceses uh, and facilitating theological di dialogue between them. After all, it starts, all of this starts with our understanding of God, our theology, and what we believe God's vision is for us, for our communities and for God's world. After Archdeacon Jennifer, we cross the Atlantic to Father Rock Higgins, who is a steering group member lead for the Interdiocesan Youth Pilgrimages. Well over a hundred young people now have been part of this remarkable educational programme, which connects them online and in person, led here in the Diocese of Liverpool by Rebecca Richardson, Heightened Deanery Schools and Youth Worker. The pilgrimage operates on a three-year cycle and in 2022 the entire youth pilgrimage, around 70 in all on this cycle, will be gathering here in Liverpool for a time of fellowship, prayer and mission. Do pray for all that is being done in preparation for that. We, from there we, move, we stay on the, the other side of the pond when we will hear from the Reverend Case Ramy who is my counterpart as the Bishop's Officer for the Triangle of Hope over in Virginia Diocese. Case lives just outside Washington DC and has for many years campaigned against racism and discrimination. He runs an excellent blog called Racial Heresy, which I'd really encourage you to connect with. He will be speaking about Sankofa and white supremacy at the heart of many of the deep divisions which have been part of America's history and also our own. Finally, at the end of our lecture, I will wrap up with news of an emerging piece of work here in Liverpool Diocese and also how you can find out more about what we're doing and become a part of this work should you feel called to do so. So first, I now hand over to Father Nana Kesi from his home in Kumasi in Ghana. Hello, dear people of God in the Diocese of Liverpool. This is your friend, Reverend Father Nana Kesi. I bring you greetings from the Triangle of Hope in the Anglican Diocese of Kumasi. It's a great privilege to be called upon to be part of this all-important lecture on Sankofa. I'd like to give a, a brief introduction on the word Sankofa. Sankofa is one of the Edinkra symbols. It is used in Ghana by the Akan tribes. The Sankofa is derived from three letter words. That is San, which means to return. Ko, that is to go. And then Fa, which means to take, to seek, and to look. The Sankofa symbol is represented by a bird which feet is firmly grounded and trying to look back to take an egg off its back. The Akan believe that the past serve as a guide for planning the future. To the Akan, it is this wisdom in learning from the past which ensures a strong future. The Sankofa also represents the need to reflect on the past to build a successful future. The Akan believe that there must be movement and new learning as time passes. As this forward march proceeds, the knowledge of the past must never be forgotten. So in summary, uh, the Sankofa 
means to reflect on the past to make a meaningful future. So a triangle of hope, I think it serves as a very important symbol. When we look back in the olden days during the transatlantic slave trade, I think a lot happened that we can learn from so that we do not repeat the mistakes that our forefathers made during that time. And this will also inform us to kind of repent and then do what will help us today and the future as one people with one baptism, one faith, and one God. So briefly, this is what I can say about Sankofa. God bless you so much, and we pray that the good Lord will heal all of us and the whole world from the coronavirus, which is fighting us. God bless you, and remain blessed. Amen. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us for this Liverpool Cathedral uh, Lenten series and thank you for your interest in the Triangle of Hope. I'm the Venerable Jennifer McKenzie, Archdeacon of Wigan and West Lancashire here in Liverpool and I've been asked to speak to you about Sankofa, its gift to theology and theological dialogue. So let's start with the question, what is theology? Actually, let's start with what theology is not. Theology is not merely an academic pursuit for brilliant scholars and would-be clergy. Theology is a daily pursuit for all people of faith, everywhere and at all times. Yes, we are doing theology when we ask the big questions about the meaning and purpose of our lives. And we are also doing theology when we simply speak to God in prayer. Reflecting on how God is at work in our lives and the lives of those we love is a key moment of when theology happens. And theology happens when we search scripture and work for justice and equality. We people of faith frequently do the work of theology, whether we know it or not. Pastoral theology, practical theology, reflective theology, liberation theology. So how does Sankofa fit in with doing theology? Foremost, Sankofa is a deeply meaningful, deeply purposeful, deeply prayerful, and deeply liberating idea. Sankofa, that belief that it is not taboo to go back and retrieve that which you have forgotten, roots and grounds our shared triangle of hope endeavors in the richness of the Akan culture and the Twi language of Ghana. It is indeed good and right to locate the hope of this Anglican Communion Project work in the place and people who were both captive and captors, sold and sellers, male and female, slave and free. It is not wrong to go back and retrieve the whole story of our shared shame. Indeed, it is the only way we can hope to move forward with healing and reconciliation, both deeply theological acts. The apex of our Christian theology is God, merciful father, generous creator, mother hen, brooding spirit, flesh and blood brother, Lord and savior, Jesus, our Lord and brother, pitches his tent among us in order to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to liberate the oppressed. The gift of Sankofa to us is its capacity to restore our sight in order to release us from shame and free those who are still this day oppressed because we are still holding on to that shame. Sankofa is fully ordinary and yet has the capacity to unleash a deeply theological dialogue. 
Applying the wisdom of Sankofa, we are led to consider before God our deeply disturbing shared history of violence, dehumanization, exploitation, and racism, all sadly of which were reinforced by and promoted by our church, the Anglican Church, here in Liverpool, in Virginia, and even in Ghana. It is incumbent upon us today, the church, to arrest any further participation in the ongoing pandemic of racism. And to do that, we cannot erase our history. Instead, we are called to retrieve that history. And we are simultaneously led to consider before God the hopeful and transformed future which we are being called into by God. Sankofa helps us to do both. Sankofa guides us as we seek to go back and retrieve the truth of our intertwined stories so that we may all repent of the part our ancestors and forebears in the faith played in the triangle of despair. To go back and retrieve the truth of our intertwined stories so that in repentance we may seek and find forgiveness and understanding. Go back and retrieve the truth of our intertwined story so that in a spirit of truth, repentance, forgiveness, and understanding, we may find true reconciliation. So that we may become reconcilers together, painting a picture of God's hope in our world today as a witness to the gospel we proclaim. Sankofa then grounds our theology of mission. God, our God, is a missional God, and God's mission has a church. We, the church, are called to participate in God's mission and ministry of reconciliation in a beautiful yet hurting world so that we may be reconciled to one another and to God on whom all our hope is founded. Hello. My name is Rock Higgins, and I'm one of the leaders of the Youth Pilgrimage from the Diocese of Virginia. Sankofa, go back and get it, or it's not taboo to fetch what is at risk of being left behind. I am gifted with the opportunity to serve as one of the leaders from Virginia with the Youth Pilgrimages. And before I became a priest, I was a teacher. And as a teacher, one of my key responsibilities was to provide context to my students. They might learn all kinds of wonderful and world-changing things, but often, if not given context, the incredible learnings I share would fly away. Knowledge needs a place to land. There is nowhere for these wonderful ideas to land. So context is needed for this knowledge to settle in and make itself at home. Our youth pilgrimage is a generational shifting from information to transformation by providing context. It's not a fact found in a book or more likely from a website. It's gained through the blood and sweat and tears of travel and the deep bonds of lasting relationships. In all three dioceses, Liverpool, Kamasi, and Virginia, the cycles of despair and ignorance can be broken by giving young, energetic leaders the information, the context, and a wonderful interdiocesan and international relationships that reinforce both in their voices and throughout the rest of their lives in and outside the church, the pilgrims can share what they've learned and experienced. It takes beyond head knowledge, the facts and figures that can be recited and presented, and it moves it deep down into the heart, soaked into the marrow of their bones. This type of knowledge, deep knowledge, can change their lives and change others' lives through them. And so doing, the cycles of despair from what has happened and cannot be changed, and the cycles of ignorance from having no clue about what has transpired over centuries, both of these cycles can be broken with a shift in our feelings and from providing that deep knowledge enabling personal and cultural transformation. The conversations on the bus, the ponderings in the hotel rooms before they drift off to sleep, the interactions as people break bread together, the pilgrimages provide 24-7 opportunities for the pilgrims to learn with and from one another. And as they grow personally, they grow together collectively. This happens in the fort at Jamestown here in Virginia or along Penny Lane in Liverpool. 
It happens along Monument Avenue in Richmond, which has quite changed since our last pilgrimage, or at the last bath outside of Cape Coast. It happens in prayer at the Liverpool Cathedral or at the slave quarters of Thomas Jefferson's Monticello. I still remember the wrestling over Thomas Jefferson after leaving his plantation. The students going back and forth because the same man who wrote, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, also owned and fathered people that were enslaved. Hypocrisy? A man of his times and culture? Maybe both? The cycles of despair over these contradictions, the cycles of ignorance that sw are swept under the rug for so long, they can be broken through Sankofa, going back and getting what was forgotten. It's not taboo to claim the past. It is necessary, it is holy, and it is what we are about on the youth pilgrimages. How can we all make Sankofa real in our own lives by shifting the information we may have into that deep knowledge with context and fuller understanding so that we dare not lose and we dare might transform into the glory of God. I challenge myself and all of us to be intentional in claiming Sankofa and breaking these cycles of despair and ignorance, not just in the youth pilgrimage, but in all of our pilgrimages each and every day. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this conversation tonight. And from the Diocese of Virginia, blessings and peace. Good evening to Bishop Paul, honored guests, those joining in from around the world, and my esteemed friends in the Triangle of Hope. I am the Reverend Case Ramey, and as a white, straight, cisgender man from the United States, I am particularly honored and humbled to be invited to share tonight what I have begun to learn about white supremacy through the common life and mission of the Triangle of Hope. I would like to particularly thank Archbishop Daniel Sarfo, the Right Reverend Joseph Osei, Father Nanakesi, and the Mothers Union and people of the Anglican Diocese of Kumasi for all that they have shared that has supported and enabled my learning while in Ghana. In the summer of 2016, past, present, and future met for me in a moment of profound grief, deep fear, and powerful love. As I stood in the chapel of the Cape Coast Slave Trading Castle, the site of the first Anglican celebration of Holy Eucharist in Ghana. This chapel was built directly on top of the male slave dungeon, with a floor shaft in front of the chapel door which opened into that dungeon below, so that even the guards could attend while keeping watch over the people they held in bondage. Where was the body and blood of Christ that day? Please don't jump to an easy answer. Give this question a moment of Holy Saturday and the not yet empty tomb filled with the absence of God. Where was Jesus at this shared moment of our hate-filled heritage? We must answer these questions if we are ever to repent and heal. And so tonight we offer Sankofa as a resource for the interrogation of our shared identity. Responding to white supremacy in our past require Sankofa. The head and neck of the Sankofa bird are turned back, seeking every ancestor and searching all of history for the seed of wisdom, the pearl of great price present in both our unique and our shared histories. But white supremacy demands we look instead only to the whitewashed accounts of courageous exploration, turning our heads towards triumphalism and the worship of whiteness. Sankofa invites us to see our history as it is, colonialism and conquest written through the violence of white peoples and written in the blood of Jesus Christ, present in all the people of the earth. It is Christ who lived as a brown-skinned human being under an oppressive militarized regime. It is Christ who suffered unimaginably in the belly of a ship launched from Liverpool, filled with his siblings, sisters, and brothers by his siblings, sisters, and brothers from Kumasi, sailing toward the shores of Virginia. And it is Christ who died, hanging on the lynching tree. Responding to white supremacy in our present requires Sankofa. The body of the Sankofa bird is solid and here and now, living, moving, and having its being with us, incarnate in our present moment. Sankofa encourages and teaches us that we must stand firm in the present as we look to the past. But white supremacy demands we live instead in a false reality, 
where either we are blind to suffering and pain or we change only that which costs white people nothing. Sankofa invites us to see our present as it is, a violent perpetuation transmutation of past systems of oppression into modern reincarnations of the same systems that continue to betray and murder our Lord. It is Christ who does not meet white Western standards of beauty extolled and exported around the globe. It is Christ who walks each day past modern monuments and inclusive institutions, encrusted with the stolen wealth of his ancestors in bondage. It is Christ who never hears the amazing story of his people celebrated, honored, and adored, portrayed on screen, or elected to public office. And it is Christ whose life is forfeit before a murderous facility with legalized authority excuse to end him with a single white whisper of self-fulfilling fear. Responding to white supremacy in our future requires Sankofa. The feet of the Sankofa bird are pointed forward toward our shared future as one body, to the place that God will show us, to the promised land, toward beloved community. Sankofa encourages and teaches us that we must look toward our shared future. But white supremacy demands we hope and pray instead only for the future of ourselves and our posterity and those willing to be subsumed by the domination of white Jesus. Sankofa invites us to see our future as it is, wholly within the providence of God's justice, generously full of God's predilection for the poor, and openly inviting our choice, either to walk in humility and submission to our God, or to live under judgment for our rebellion against love. For it will be Christ who sits on his throne of glory, with the nations gathered before him as he separates the sheep from the goats. And it will be Christ in front of whom all our actions will be laid bare in the light. But it will be, it already is, and it forever has been Christ who can transform us to live a liberating life of love working to end white supremacy. Tonight, in the winter of 2021, past, present, and future meet again in a convicting moment full of profound grief, deep fear, and powerful love. Sankofa will guide us. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for your attention and your interest this evening. And once again, thanks for creating space in this series of lectures to consider what we believe in the triangle to be at the very heart of God's imperative for God's global church. Uh, if you wish to find out more about the work of the Triangle of Hope or Sankofa, there are three uh, options available. First of all would be to get in touch with me, uh, malcolm.rogers at liverpool.anglican.org. That's malcolm.rogers, no D in Rogers, uh, malcolm.rogers at liverpool.anglican.org. And it'd be good to arrange a, a, a virtual coffee and a chat um, second would be to visit our website, thetriangleofhope.com. That's thetriangleofhope.com, all one word. Uh, and that's full of, of resources and stories and pictures and plans to illustrate our work. Finally, if you wish, you could buy the book, Two Triangles, written by local historian Kent Pye. And, and this tells the very difficult to hear story, but vital that we do hear the story of our local involvement and material benefits from the transatlantic slave trade as a city and as a diocese. Uh, and the book is available in the Cathedral Bookshop for purchase. I, I did mention an emerging work, and I'm delighted to be able to announce tonight that over the course of this coming year, the Diocese of Liverpool will be launching the Slavery Truth Project, a diocesan-wide initiative to create a digital learning environment connected to the very many memorials, windows and, in, and even entire churches in our diocese, installed and built through the profits of slavery. Even the cathedra in our own cathedral church was provided by Adelaide Watt of the Speak Hall Watts family, uh, who made their fortune partly through the Jamaican sugar plantations. Um, the Slavery Truth Project will be a partnership between the universities and also the International Slavery Museum, and it will speak truth and offer hope in the spirit of Sankofa, 
in fact the symbol of the Slavery Truth Project, which we use with permission from Ghana, uh, is the Sankofa bird, uh, which you have heard about this evening. So thank you very much indeed for your engagement tonight, or as they say in Kumasi, Medasi. <laughs>